The following is an ESG video interview. Hi, my name is Jason Buffington. I'm the Senior Analyst at ESG covering data protection. With me today is Bill Andrews, the CEO of Exagrid, and we're going to talk about what the challenges are from protecting a modern data infrastructure. Bill, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. You know, one of the things that we hear a lot about is how people are still struggling to improve data protection. It always comes in as one of the top trends that we see year over year for organizations of all sizes, especially for mid-sized organizations, and deal with a lot of complexity in their environments. What are you seeing there? One of the things we're seeing is that the environments are more complex in the sense that you have physical servers, now you have virtualized environments, and everybody is doing a lot of different things around databases. So we're seeing customers struggle with those three and not finding a solution that can handle all three properly. So they're having to choose multiple uh, agents, multiple utilities, multiple backup applications to deal with the physical, virtual, and database dumps. Absolutely. Now, complexity is just one part of the problem, right? The other part is scale. Um, ESG data shows that production environments are going around 40% year over year, and IT budgets aren't growing by near that much. Mm -hmm. So how are they dealing with the massive amount of data that needs to be protected? That's a great question. Um, clearly, the, the big change in backup is the advent of data deduplication, where you store only the change bytes and blocks, which reduces the amount of overall storage and thus reduces the cost as your data grows. The challenge is, however, depending how data deduplication is implemented, it can slow your backups down, it can slow your restores down, and your backup window can re-expand as data grows. So clearly it has the advantage of reducing the amount of storage, which lowers costs, but you have to be careful in what implementation you choose because it can impede backup another way. All right. Okay, so that's how we're addressing the backup side of things. Now let's talk about restore. You know, ESG data shows that we've never been more dependent on our data than we are now. You know, it's typical that for high priority or tier one applications, we might see a downtime tolerance or an RTO of 15 minutes or less for over half of those applications. But, but even normal applications, 62%, so five out of eight, have a downtime tolerance of three hours or less. So it's really about how quickly can we make sure that we resume functionality. What are you seeing there from customers? So again, I think it's, it's the combination of, we had mentioned data deduplication reduces the amount of storage. You want to be careful that you don't do that data duplication in line, because if you do, it will deduplicate the data on the way to disk, and now everything is deduplicated. Every time you ask for restore, recovery, offsite tape copy, or VM boot, you have to wait till it rehydrates the data. So your restore times are going to be lengthened. What you want to do is think about restores in a different way. 90% of restores come from the most recent backup. 100% of offsite tape copies and 100% of VM boots come from the most recent backup. Yep. So you really want to keep the most recent backup in its full on deduplicated form so you can have fast restores and recoveries and then use deduplication to reduce the storage by having all the long-term retention deduplicated. All right, that makes sense. Now, we've talked a lot about the tactical side of backup and recovery as well. And certainly we see that as a high priority among our IT organizations, but we also see disaster recovery. The mm -hmm. idea of making your data survivable be just as important and also in many IT spending lists as well. So what are you seeing there? So disaster recovery is a tougher challenge because it's a double-edged sword. You have to have it in case your primary building or primary location goes away due to a natural disaster or man-made disaster. Sure. However, the likelihood you're ever going to use it is low. So you have on one hand something you absolutely need or your business can't survive, and on the other hand something that you may never use, which means it better be low cost and easy to use. So you've got to find the, the combination between those two such you can recover from a disaster, but you don't spend a lot of time on it and you don't spend a lot of money on it. That makes sense. You know, we've both been in data protection for far too long. Um, I've been mostly a software guy. You come at it from a hardware perspective. And I want to appreciate uh, uh, you coming and sharing your thoughts today. Go ahead and tell us about Exagrid and what makes the Exagrid solution different for some of the things we've talked about today. What Exagrid did differently is we looked at the problem from a backup point of view versus a storage point of view. Okay. If you look at it from a storage point of view, you just think about reducing the amount of storage to simply add data deduplication. So all the software products and all the storage products added data deduplication. They do it in line on the way to the disk, and it slows down the backups because it's compute intensive, but more importantly, you have a deduplicated copy of everything. So if you want to restore, a recovery, an offsite tape copy, you want to boot a VM, you have to wait through a lengthy rehydration process. On top of that, because you just have storage with compute, as the data grows, your backup window grows because you're increasing the amount of data to be deduplicated through a fixed amount of processor memory bandwidth. 
So what Exagrid did differently is we looked at it from a requirements perspective. We said, okay, number one, the customer wants a short backup window. Number two, they want uh, a backup window that doesn't grow as their data grows. And number three, they want fast recoveries, restores, tape copies to get people up and running quickly. So what we did is we architected a, a product with a front end landing zone where you back up straight to disk so you get high performance. On top of that, you have the most recent backups in the full form. So if you want any kind of recovery, restore, tape copy, or boot, it's sitting right there, ready to go. Exagrid brings full server appliances in a scale-out grid architecture. Okay. So what we do is if your data doubles, triples, quadruples, because we're bringing full server appliances, we double, triple, quadruple the processor, the memory, the bandwidth, and the disk. Okay. So as a result of that, as your data grows, your backup window stays fixed in length. So if the backup window is six hours at 40 terabyte, it's six hours at 100 terabyte, 200 terabyte, 300 terabyte, et cetera. And that eliminates expensive forklift upgrades down the road because you don't need to replace the front end controller in the traditional approach. And thus, ExtraGrid over time is a lower cost solution. All right, that makes sense. Hey, thanks for coming out today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, it was great. On behalf of ExtraGrid and ESG, thanks for watching.